Hey, welcome to edX world and another video in the AS A level accounting series. In this video, we're going to study about dissolution of partnership. We've already covered two videos on partnership in this series. The first one was on admission of a new partner in the firm. Second one was, a re was on retirement of an existing partner from the firm. This one is completely different. The accounting entries are not similar to what we've studied in the previous two videos. In this video, we're going to study what accounting entries are to be passed when the firm is completely dissolved. The firm has to be closed for certain reasons. So, we first understand what do you mean by dissolution and why would a firm dissolve? We would look at the journal entries at the time of dissolution. The journal entries are the key to understanding accounting treatment for any topic. And hence, I always start with the journal entries. I could give you the format of the realization account, capital account and the bank account and tell you to memorize it, but it doesn't work that way. In the long term, if you want to succeed in the subject, always focus on the basics, always understand the journal entries. After the journal entries, I'll, I'll post those entries to these accounts and at the end, we'll also see one solved example so that the concept is completely clear. So, diss dissolution of a firm is when the firm closes down, when the firm is shutting down its operations. It could happen due to multiple reasons. Let's say there is a disagreement between the partners that they don't, they don't want to continue the business the way it is being run now. So they will dissolve the firm. There could be bankruptcy issues or some other legal issues on the firm and the firm has to shut down. The firm has grown in size and the partners now want to convert it into a company. Could be a private limited company or a public limited company. That could be also a common reason for dissolution of the firm. There could be death of one or more partners and the other partners may not want to continue the firm so they might dissolve the firm so when a firm dissolves what happens is the firm will sell away all its assets the non-current and the current assets realize the money use that money to first pay all the liabilities of the firm and the remaining cash or the remaining assets will be distributed among the partners based on the whatever based on whatever balances they have in the firm so what is the order in which the firm has to discharge its liabilities? First, the money that will be realized is used to pay for the dissolution expenses. There could be certain legal expenses, court expenses that will have to be met by the firm. After meeting these expenses, the firm will have to settle all the outside liabilities. Outside liability means third party liabilities could be in form of loans, trade payables, other payables, etc. Then it could be possible that a partner has advanced a loan to the firm. Now this is the firm's liability towards the partner. So once the outside liabilities are met, the next in the sequence is the firm will have to meet the liabilities towards the partner. And after that, whatever is left belongs to all the partners based on whatever capital balances they hold in the firm. Let's have a look at what journal entries will be passed at the time of dissolution of the firm. See, at the time of dissolution of the firm, the books of the firms have to be closed. In order to do that, we will have to close up all the assets and liabilities of the firm. So our first entry is to close all the assets of the firm and transfer the balances in these assets to the realization account. Realization account is an account opened specifically to pass the entries at the time of dissolution of the partnership. Transfer all the assets, but keep in mind, do not transfer the cash and the bank account. Rest, all the current and non-current assets would be transferred. Keep in mind that the amount that would be used for this entry would be the book value of the assets. So we will close all the assets, credit all the assets with the book values and transfer these amounts to the realization account. In the similar way, we will close all the liabilities in our books, all the non-current, all the current liabilities, except our liabilities towards the partner, firm's liabilities towards the partner, which could include the partner's loan in the firm. To close the liabilities, we will debit all the liabilities and credit the realization account. Again, amounts here would be the book value of the liabilities. Before going to the next set of journal entries, let us post these entries in the realization account and see how does the realization account look after these entries. So I have a format here for realization account. The first entry was to transfer all the assets or close all the assets and transfer to the realization account that will appear on the debit side of the realization account. All the non-current assets of the firm, all the current assets of the firm except cash and bank. Then on the credit side, I will record or I will transfer all the liabilities of the firm at the book values except the partner's loan. So I have non-current liabilities and the current liabilities here. Continuing to our journal entries, our next set of entry here would be 
to sell our assets current and non current and receive the cash or check for them basically realize our sell our assets and realize the money so when the firm receives money for the assets realized we will debit our bank account and credit the realization account see there is one very common mistake being made by students here they let's say the inventory is sold and the firm has received the money they would debit the bank but here they would credit the inventory account but ask yourself would this be right we've already closed and transferred all the book value of the assets to the realization account after that entry we cannot use any uh, any asset account again in any of the entries so whenever the assets are realized debit the bank account and credit the realization account basically all the entries after this will be used will be passed using the realization account we will also have to pay our outside liabilities or third party liabilities bank account would be credited money flowing out of the business and again we will debit our realization account do not try to debit the individual liabilities account because the balances in those liabilities are already transferred to the realization account and are closed in the books now apart from this the firm might also have to meet some realization expenses again the entry for realization expenses would be exactly like the entry at passed at the time of payment of liabilities realization account would be debited and bank account would be credited so if you notice a pattern here in these set of entries when the firm is receiving the money the realization account is being credited when the firm is paying money realization account is debited you could in your mind imagine that the credit side of realization account is the gain side and the debit side of the realization account is the loss side continuing to our realization account we will post these entries to the realization account so first the firm will sell the assets and receive the money for them the, that entry would appear on the credit side as bank and obviously the fact of sale of assets could be mentioned in brackets whatever amounts are realized do not try to write the name of the asset here like inventory or building whatever you have to mention bank and in bracket you could write the sale of specific assets payment of liabilities and payment of expenses would appear on the debit side so on the debit side we have bank and in brackets we could mention payment of liabilities and payment of expenses continuing again to our journal entries at the time of dissolution it is it could also happen that the firm may not sell the assets for cash to outsiders it could ask the partners to take over the assets for it for certain agreed value when that happens the firm will not receive the money by cash or check instantly instead the partners capital would be used to complete the journal entries if you remember when the when the assets were realized for cash our cash or bank was debited and realization was credited now this entry is similar to that entry instead of bank or cash being debited we will be debiting our partners capital account because we will be charging the value of the assets to the partners capital and the realization account will be credited in the same way as it was done in the last entry it could also happen that partners might decide to take over liabilities and pay the liabilities on behalf of the firm in that case realization account would be debited and partners capital account is credited if you compare this to our previous entry where the liabilities were paid bank or cash was credited but in this case the partners capital account would be credited because the firm needs to compensate the partners because of them taking the liabilities over the of the firm partners may also agree to pay the realization expenses on behalf of the firm in that case the entry would be exactly similar to what we've seen in the previous entry realization account debit and partners capital account credit partners will have to be compensated because they're paying the realization expenses on behalf of the firm if i post these entries to the realization account when the partner takes the assets of the firm takes over the assets of the firm entry would be on the credit side as partners capital and bracket whatever assets are taken over and on the debit side we will have the partners capital and whatever liabilities taken over or expenses being paid by the partner once all these entries are done there would be some realization gain or loss in the firm i told you that the credit side of the realization is the gain side and the debit side of the realization is the loss side so if it is a realization gain the credit side would be higher than the debit side so to close the realization account we will have to debit the realization account and transfer this gain to the partners capital account by crediting their capital account and 
if the debit side of the realization is greater than the credit side of the realization, it means it's a realization loss. We will have to close the realization account by crediting it and transfer the loss to the debit side of partner's capital account. In the realization account, if the credit is greater than the debit, it means it is a profit, realization profit that would appear on the debit side, transferred to partner's capital. But if the debit side is greater than the credit side, realization loss would be transferred to the partner's capital entry would appear on the credit side of the realization account. So this completes our realization account. Let's also have a look at the final set of journal entries that would complete our dissolution entries. So the next step is to pay the firm's liabilities towards the partner, which is usually the partner's loan. So partner's loan would be debited and bank account would be credited, obviously. Once the firm meets the liabilities towards the partners, the next step is obviously to distribute whatever money is remaining in the bank account between the partners based on the balances in their capital account. So partner's capital account would be debited here and bank account would be credited. So if I have to show you the format of the partner's capital account, balance brought down obviously from the balance sheet. I told you the partners might take over the assets of the firm. If you remember that entry appeared on the credit side of the realization account as partner's capital. That entry would appear here in the partner's capital on the debit side. And if the partner takes over liabilities of the firm, the partner will have to be credited. The partner's capital account will have to be credited. So on the credit side realization and bracket, you could mention the liabilities taken over. If the firm has made a realization profit on the credit side of partner's capital, if there's a realization loss on the debit side of partner's capital, after all these entries are done, whatever balance remains in the partner's capital, that will be paid to the partner through the business bank account and hence the balancing figure in partner's capital will be mentioned as bank, the difference between the credit side and the debit side. And that will close your partner's capital account also. After all these entries are done, the only account that remains in the business and that is open is the bank account. So we will also have to prepare our bank account. Balance brought down obviously from the balance sheet, the latest balance sheet given. The assets were realized, money was received for them, so that will come on the debit side. And the liabilities that were paid by the firm through the cash or bank would be appearing on the credit side of the bank account. Partner's loan was met by the firm, that will appear on the credit side of the bank account. And partner's capital balances were also paid using the business cash or bank account that will appear on the credit side. After all these entries are done, what you would notice is that the debit side of the bank account and the credit side of the bank account should be the same. There should not be any balance remaining in the account. If there is a balance remaining in the account, it means there is some mistake being made either in the realization account or the capital account or the bank account. You might have to go back and check for the mistake and correct the mistake. Now let's have a look at a solved example and after that example, I'm sure you will be able to solve other questions on dissolution from your past papers or from any other book. In our example, two partners are there, Tess and Jess, sharing profits and losses equally. They decide to dissolve their partnership on 31st July 2021. On that date, balance sheet is given. Non-current assets are there, current assets are there, capital. Under non-current liabilities, we have loan from Jess. So this is a part, this is the firm's liability towards a partner and current liabilities. Certain adjustments are given regarding what the assets were able to realize, what were paid towards the liabilities. And at the end, we are supposed to make a realization account, partner's capital account and the bank account. Let us start with our realization account. I told you our realization account would begin by closing all the assets of the firm except the bank account and closing all the liabilities of the firm except the partner's loan. So the non-current assets of 40,000, inventory of 9,000, trade receivables of 4,000. These three assets would be transferred to the debit side of realization. And on the liability side, I just have trade payables, 8,000, which will be transferred to the credit side of realization account. We have transferred our assets and liabilities, the book value of the assets and liabilities. Let us look at the additional information given. The non-current assets were sold for 58,000 cash. This would go on the credit side as bank, 58,000. The inventory was taken over by TESS at an agreed price of 7,700. 
which will go on the credit side as TESIS capital in bracket inventory 7700 and the trade receivables realized 3800 this would also go as bank on the credit side of the realization account as trade receivables collected. The adjustment number 4 says that trade payables were paid 7500 in settlement whenever liabilities or expenses are paid that will be recorded on the debit side of realization account so on the debit side bank and in bracket we will write trade payables 7500 the realization expenses or the dissolution expenses were 3400 again on the debit side bank and in bracket dissolution expenses 3400. Our entries in the realization account are complete. We just need to see now whether the credit side is greater than the debit side and it's a profit or the debit side is greater than the credit side and it's a loss. If I take the total, I can see that the credit side is greater than the debit side and it is a realization profit. So let us take the total on the credit side, calculate the difference and transfer the realization profit to the partner's capital account. So when I deducted the debit side total from the credit side, I got the total realization profit as 13,600 and the profit sharing ratio is equal. So I divided 13,600 equally between Tess and Jess. Each one of them gained 6,800 as realization profit. Our realization account is complete here. Let's go ahead and prepare our capital account and the bank account. Capital account would begin with balance brought down on the credit side. The partner test took over the inventory at a price of 7700. This would be recorded on the debit side of the partner's capital. Apart from that, we have a realization profit that will appear on the credit side of the partner's capital. Let us record these two entries first. No other entries in the capital account. So whatever balance remains in each of the partner's capital account that will be paid through the business bank account. So what we'll do is we'll take a total on the credit side, deduct the amounts on the debit side and the balance will be paid through the business bank account. So Tess would be paid 24,100 and Jess would be paid 26,800 from the business bank account. Finally, we will prepare our bank account and see if the bank account at the end matches. There is no balance in the bank account. If that happens, it means we've completed all our entries correctly. The bank account would begin with the balance brought down on the debit side given in the balance sheet as 2000. Then I would record on the debit side the money received from sale of non-current assets 58,000 and also the money received from receivables, trade receivables 3800. On the credit side, the money that was paid to creditors 7500 and the cost incurred on dissolution 3400 would be recorded. If you realize one thing, I have not recorded the amount for inventory 7700 here because the firm did not receive money for it. In fact, Tess took over the inventory, so that is not recorded here in the bank account. Next, we will record the partner's loan that was paid by the firm. So Jess's loan was paid 2000 and partner's balance in the capital account was also paid through the business bank account. So that will also be recorded. All these entries will be there on the credit side of the bank account because these are payments from the firm's bank account.
our entries in the bank account are complete. Let's take a total on both the sides, the debit and the credit side and see if the, we get the same total in both the columns. Yes, the total on both the sides are the same, 63,800. It means our entries are complete and we've not missed out on any entry of, or we've not made any arithmetical errors in preparing the accounts. I hope this video was useful for you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Please share the video with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. I'll see you soon with a new video.